It's hard to imagine this lush landscape in Arizona's Apache Sitgreaves National Forest having any issues with drought. Drought is definitely an issue for, for our job as frog biologists. Cody Mosley and Audrey Owens are biologists for the Arizona Game and Fish Department, and one of their jobs is to conserve and protect Chiricahua leopard frogs. Oh, I see a frog. They're listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. The major threats include loss of habitat, disease, and invasive non-native predators like bullfrogs and crayfish. We've been in a drought for the last 20 plus years, which is, you know, just one more threat for the Chiricahua leopard frog. Our goal is to establish populations of these frogs um, out in the wild on the landscape. That means finding suitable habitat in which to relocate frogs from other wild populations or release those raised in captivity by conservation partners like the Phoenix Zoo. The outflow of this stock tank feeds into a creek where the biologists are looking for frogs. It's actually easier to survey at night because the frogs are more active at night. Cody did a release of frogs at this site in 2020. Um, and so we're trying to find out um, if we still have adult frogs here. But we're also looking for tadpoles tonight. That would be a sign that frogs have started to become established here um, if we're seeing successful breeding. Unfortunately, we are seeing crayfish. So we're removing them. They don't seem to be in high densities, but they're non-native, they're invasive, and they certainly can predate upon Chiricahua leopard frogs, tadpoles, and egg masses. So did you see the eye shine first? Nope, or just came frog? around and saw the frog. Yes. The last survey I did in 2020, I would have bet money that we would not have found another frog. I was that concerned with the water level. Yeah, he was hanging up on that shore right there. And we haven't seen him in high numbers, but that's not a bad thing. We're just getting this population started. I'm hoping that, you know, after a couple releases, we can get a population established that will start dispersing. What we're working towards in Chiricahua Leopard Frog Conservation is getting metapopulations of frogs. And that's essentially a series of sites that are occupied, so kind of subpopulations across the landscape that are close enough in proximity to each other that frogs can move from one site to the next. Some sites rely on runoff from snow and rain. Others, like this stock tank, are fed by springs, making them more reliable sources of water. You know, during times of drought, some of those sites might dry and we might lose, you know, a handful of those populations. But we have sites like this, you know, spring fed sites um, or sites that are maybe on a well. And so these sites are going to have more permanent water. And so those are going to be really important sites for the meta population as a whole. Several miles from here is another site that's about as good as it gets for frog habitat. It's a spring-fed stock tank with water flowing in and out. Audrey, I'm probably going to do a call playback over here as well. This habitat is free of non-native predators, and it's one of the first sites in this recovery area where biologists documented frogs surviving through multiple winters, a big deal in the White Mountains. Overwinter survival of frogs here just was the best. I mean, it was cloud nine. Better yet, this site had proven to be resilient to drought. 2018 was a really dry year, but this spring-fed stock tank continued to hold water. Then came 2020. Two years of extreme drought revealed a hard truth about these so-called permanent waters. We discovered that they can dry. <laughs> the water just kept dropping. Going into the, the summer of 2021, it was just bone dry. That was a significant blow to us. It's really reshaping the way that we think about um, habitat and the way that we think about, you know, what is permanent water. And so we need to be thinking differently. We need to be doing something different. 
One of the, the tools that we use against drought is habitat restoration. Like using methods to improve spring flow and cleaning sediment out of tanks so they'll hold more water. We did a project in a different recovery unit in 2018. This was a spring-fed site that um, had been a stronghold for Chiricahua leopard frogs through the 90s. And by 2017, 2018, the site was really not holding much water anymore because of erosion. Um, the channel had been sedimented in, and so we hired a spring specialist to come in and clean out that channel, creating um, pools through using a liner and also soil that was high in clay. So he created a groundwater dam just to kind of slow that water down and create pools. And the site filled with water immediately as soon as the monsoon hit that year. At this point, 2021, that site is an awesome Chiricahua leopard frog site and it's a source population for the whole management area. Back at this spring-fed stock tank, Cody is feeling optimistic. Seeing today and seeing that the water is up and we actually have flow is amazing. Like right off the bat, I'm super excited about it. By September of 2021, the site was finally filling with water thanks to a strong summer monsoon. But it will take time for the habitat to fully recover. Drought has made conserving Chiricahua leopard frogs a bit more complicated, but the lessons learned will help biologists build a better future for frogs and their aquatic habitats. We're looking at you know, private landowners who have a well and who are interested in providing habitat for Chiricahua leopard frogs. Stock tanks that have a liner where we can ensure some sort of permanency of water on the landscape. Again, so those metapopulations can contract, but we will always have water and frogs, at least at a handful of sites within the meta population. And that's gonna be good for the frog. It's also gonna be good for elk, turkey, bear. Water is good for all wildlife.